The Mutual Broadcasting System, in cooperation with Family Theater Incorporated, presents O Romeo, My Romeo, starring Barry Fitzgerald and Sandra Berkova. John Kieran is your host. <laughs> More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. Here is tonight's Family Theater host, the Information Please regular, John Kieran. The world is so full of a number of things, I'm sure we should all be as happy as kings. Yes, there are millions of wonderful things in the universe around us. The heavenly bodies whirling in the sky, the earth spinning in space, flowers, trees, myriads of insects, and all have their place and part in a wonderful plan. The more you think about it, the more you realize it's God's supreme plan that keeps this old world of ours in running order. Yes, and we fit into that plan, too, the plan of God's providence. And in spite of sorrows and troubles, worries and cares, life is a wonderful experience. An experience that can be so happy when we realize the important part that God should play in our lives. When we realize the wonderful hope and strength that comes through prayer. Yes, God can and does hear our prayers. And one of the most beautiful forms of a simple appeal to Him is family prayer. Family prayer is a perfect plan for happiness in every home. A perfect plan because it's God's plan. John Kieran will return later in the program. But now, O Romeo, My Romeo, with tonight's family theater stars, Barry Fitzgerald, and the young concert violinist, Sandra Berkova. <laughs> This was my 23rd year at Carlton School as the head of the Natural Science Department. It was a pleasant place, Carlton. We had the green rolling hills around us and a beautiful silver lake stretching off to the west. Everything was fine the way the school was run, except that I wasn't too fond of the new headmistress. (laughs) Telling me how to run me classes. And what could she know about my experiments or how to manage an aquarium? I sometimes even doubted if she knew much about the young ladies who attended the school. I guess Jackie Porter was one of the most interesting of the whole group. Jackie Porter was her name. Her mother and father were the foremost couple on the American stage and screen. Ah, she was a talented young lass, a great gift for music. When she touched the violin, she could bring tears to an old fellow like myself. That afternoon, when I was passing the conservatory and heard her practicing, I had a suspicion there was something wrong. Uh, Hello, Jackie. Oh, Mr. Job, I didn't notice you coming in. Keep playing, Jackie. It's beautiful. Thank you. Ah, there's nothing like music to keep your soul singing in your body. Yes, it's all right, I guess. There's something troubling you, Jackie. Oh, I'm sick and tired of having to practice all the time. But the biggest joy in life is the success that comes from hard work. But I don't want to become a violinist. No, no, don't start that. Your parents sent you up here because they knew you'd get a fine education and a fine musical training. No, they sent me up here because... because they don't want me to become an actress. That's why. Oh, why would you be wanting that? An actress... Just because I'd like to, and... And you with a great gift of music, and a great opportunity here. I know, Mr. Job, but... Ah, uh, now I've been wondering to myself, and saying, now there's a young girl who should be the happiest little creature in the world, but she's not, and that's Jackie. So I said to myself, well, maybe all she needs is somebody to talk to. Well, you've been very kind to me, Mr. Job. I've been lonesome here, and that old Miss Pringle... Now, now, don't say anything about Miss Pringle, Jackie. She's an upright woman and an up-to-date headmistress. And she's always snooping around, that's now, what. Now, now, now. Oh, there's another thing I was thinking about. How's your class work? 
Now, I noticed your marks were... Uh, oh, I like your classes, Mr. Job. Biology is the best subject. Well, you're a great girl for putting the committer on me. Sure, I don't know what you're up to. With a gift from music like yours, and still you like biology. But you want to be an actress. Well, it's a long story, Mr. Job, but Mother and Daddy have been... Well, we have a new house in Hollywood Hills. <laughs> There you are, darling. Oh, you look positively scrumptious. No, I don't feel scrumptious. Oh, now, darling, you promised if Mother bought you a new dress before you went back to school that you wouldn't make a scene. Oh, Mother, I don't want to go to that old boarding school again. All they have me doing is practicing and practicing. Jackie, darling, Mother knows what's best for you. Well, we pick Carlton not only because it's out in the country, but well, because we want you to get a fine musical training. But I don't want to be in the country, and I don't want a musical training. I want to stay here with you and Daddy. Darling, please. Now, you've been with us for a whole weekend, and you had a weekend with us when you came back from camp. Now, your father and I have to start on a new picture, and, well... You don't uh, want me around, that's what. Oh, Jackie, sweet. Daddy and I want you to have a normal childhood, to be with other girls your own age. We think you have great talent as a violinist. Besides, the movie studio is no place for a young girl like you. There's time enough for that when you're older. If you want to. Well, I'm not so young, Mother. I'm 14. Just like Juliet. And she didn't have to play a violin. Please stop talking about Juliet, Jackie. Well, Juliet wasn't much older than me when she met Romeo. Oh, Julie. Jackie, why can't you forget about acting until you've finished your education, darling? Now, come on, get your hat. Daddy's taking us to the station. Oh, Mother, I wish I didn't have to take that old bumpy train to school. Please, Jackie, don't be obstinate. Oh, don't you know that Mommy loves you very, very much? Yes, Mother, but... Hello there. What? Everyone ready? Oh, Paul. I've been waiting. Have you Jackie's tickets? Yes, I have Jackie's tickets. And I've been waiting for the past 20 minutes. Oh, no, please, Paul, don't be difficult. I've been... I've had a trying enough time with Jackie And what's here. her current problem? Daddy, couldn't you let me go to a dramatic school right Good here? Good heavens, must we go through that again? Oh, honest, I want to stay here. I'd like to watch you and Mother act sometimes. I wouldn't be in the way. Honest, I wouldn't. Jackie, why is it you always persist in making yourself appear like an orphan of the storm whenever you have to leave for school? Everything's all arranged. Miss Pringle will meet you at Del Amo with the station wagon. And for heaven's sakes, try and get along with her for the rest of the year. Oh, I hate Miss Pringle. Jackie, that'll be enough. Both your father and I have had a wretched day, and, well, you haven't helped matters any. Come along now. And, uh, Jackie... Yes, Daddy? Your mother and I are looking forward to the day when you'll be... Well, maybe the world's greatest violinist. That means good teachers and a great deal of practice. If we hear good reports, we'll have you down for another weekend soon. And we'll let you spend a day at the studio with us. Will you, Teddy? Will you really? I said if. Now, let's be a good child and get to the train. You've got a wonderful year before you, studying, concentrating. Uh, you'll have a lake, canoes, horseback riding. Matter of fact, I, I wish we could go with you. Oh, Daddy, I... I wish you and Mother could. I wish it so much. Well, Jackie and I had quite a few talks, and I got to know her much better in the weeks following. I began to see the hunger and the loneliness that was eating into her heart. She was a difficult girl to understand. Of course, Mr. Crumley, he's the professor of psychology on the staff. He'd probably say that you shouldn't spoil children. But I had my own theory, that the kindness and affection of those whom children love is what makes them grow to be beautiful and happy. Oh, Jackie and I became pals. Sometimes she used to visit my lab. Hello, Mr. Job. How are all your bugs and bees this afternoon? Oh, fine. I've been busy with a very interesting experiment. Oh, you're doing some drawings? This is a sketch of that rubbish cat in the glass case over there. Hmm, it looks like an insect. Well, it is an insect, a caterpillar. Nemoria californica, it's called. And you're making a drawing of it? Yeah, yeah. I'm fitting it into this little series for a special uh, lesson tomorrow. Well, what's it about? Well, it shows how one insect depends for existence on other insects, and how the insects depend on the plants and the birds on the insects. So there's a whole series, everything dependent on something else, all fitting into a wonderful plan. 
Just like you fit into a plan, Jackie. Me? Sure, we all fit into a plan. But I don't feel I fit in anywhere. Everything and everybody needs something to exist, and everything and everybody must contribute something to life. That's the plan. Well, I don't contribute much. Sure, you have a great gift and talent, and you'll contribute to making others happy and better by your music. Oh, you're not going to talk about that again. Well, I have to be going. Is there more trouble? No, I'm all right. Is it Miss Pringle? Oh, it's not just Miss Pringle. Oh. You heard from your folks lately? Oh, yes. Yes, I have. Hmm. How lately? Oh, just... just recently. A short while ago. Recently, huh? As a matter of fact, it's been over two weeks now, hasn't it? Oh, oh Mr. Job, I wish I were dead. No, no, no. Come, that's no way to look at things, Jackie. Please don't call me Jackie. What were you? No, 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 no. That's your name, isn't it? Yes, but... But what? Well, the only reason I'm called Jackie is that Mother and Daddy wanted a boy instead of me. That's why they christened me Jacqueline, so they could call me Jackie and pretend I was a boy. Why, I think Jackie's a fine name. Well, I don't. I hate it. Well, maybe we can find another name. Uh, what name do you like? Juliet. Oh, I love the name Juliet. <laughs> Let me see now. Now, how does that line go? Shakespeare's Juliet. A rose by any other name would smell as sweet. Well, that's what it's going to be. From now on, I'll call it Juliet. Oh, that'll be wonderful. I've always wanted to be Juliet. So that's what it, why you were doing the balcony scene from Romeo and Juliet down at the lake all by yourself the other evening. Oh, you heard me? Oh, I didn't think anyone was around. Well, I came down after that burden expedition we had in the afternoon to make sure the canoes were all tied up for the night. But I didn't want to interrupt you. Besides, I like Shakespeare. You do? Oh, yes. I was raised on two books, the Bible and Shakespeare's works. No finer reading in the whole world. In my younger days, when I did field work for some surveys, I used to read a lot of Shakespeare when we were off in the woods. Then, then maybe, maybe... Maybe what? Maybe you do the balcony scene from Romeo and Juliet with me. I've got the play right here in my pocket. Oh, I'm not much of a Romeo. Oh, please. Well, for you, Juliet, I think I'll be able to put a little fire into it. Oh, you're a darling, Mr. Job. Tell you what we'll do. We'll make believe this platform is the balcony. Now, up you go. That's it. Oh, this is fun. You'd better let me take the book, Juliet. Me memory's not what it used to be. Oh, here it is, Mr. Job. I've got the place marked. I know Juliet's lines by heart. I'll stand back here a bit, and you just fire away. You give me the cue. Well, the last couple of lines where I've got it marked. Okay, here we go. See how she leans her cheek upon her hand. Oh, that I were a glove upon that hand, that I might touch that cheek. Ah, oh, me. She speaks. Oh, speak again, bright angel. For the art is glorious to this night, being o'er my head as is a winged messenger of heaven unto the white upturned wandering eyes of mortals that fall back to gaze on him when he bestrides the lazy pacing clouds and sails upon the bosom of the air. O oh, Romeo, Romeo, wherefore art thou, Romeo? Deny thy father and refuse thy name. Or if thou wilt not, be but sworn my love. And I'll no longer be a Capulet. Shall I hear more, or shall I speak at this? Tis but thy name that is my enemy. Thou art thyself. Jackie <gasps> Colver, get down off that platform. Why, what in the world? Mr. Job, I'm surprised at you. But, Miss Pringle, Mr. Job and I are rehearsing. So I heard. Of all the ridiculous things, Mr. Job, you're encouraging this child. She's supposed to be practicing. I had to hunt all over the grounds to find her. Well, I don't see anything wrong in reciting a little Shakespeare, Miss Pringle. Well, for your information, Mr. Job, Jackie's mother and father gave me explicit instructions that I was to discourage any inclination on Jackie's part toward... toward histrionics. Histro... what? Your mother and father will not allow you to have anything to do with play acting. Oh, no! They... they wouldn't do that. They couldn't. Well, they have. And as headmistress of Carlton School... It is my duty to carry out the wishes of the parents. I'm... I'm sorry I had to tell you this, but... This outlandish performance of yours and Mr. Job's has left me no other alternative. Oh, Mr. Job. There, there, now, youngster. Don't take it so hard. And as for you, Mr. Job, your work here is to be confined solely to your classes. 
I insist that you remember that from now on. Yes, Miss Bingo. We'll discuss that later. Come along, Jackie, and begin your practice. We've had enough of this... this foolishness. It's not foolish. It's what I wanted to do all my life. But why did Mother and Daddy do this to me? Why did they tell you a thing like that? And now, young ladies, that's about the whole lesson for today. Oh, uh, I may add a little remark of my own. I notice some of you young ladies have very poor grades and that you're sitting there very complacent. Now, you know, you can't just come into a classroom and sit down, stretch out your feet and open your mouth and expect learning to be poured into you. It requires a little work, and that I hope you'll do before the midterm examination comes on. Well, good afternoon, young ladies. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Jackson. Oh, Mr. Job. Mr. Job. Well, well, Jackie. Uh, Juliet. Are my marks bad? Oh, I guess there are some whose are a little worse. Oh, you know I like biology so much. Oh, but I can't remember all those funny names like Cullet, Pipian, and Isopipe. You mean Isopipe? There are no pipes in those little creatures. Oh, I get all mixed up with the names. Oh, just a matter of study, Jackie. Uh, but how's your music? Oh, pretty good, Mr. Job. I hear that you're playing in the school concert tomorrow night. Yes, and I've been practicing hard for that. Ah, she'll be giving a lot of us a great deal of pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. Well, I'd be re- better be running. Oh, by the way, Jackie, are your father and mother coming to the concert tomorrow night? Did you ask them? Oh, yes. I wrote to them, and they said if they could possibly make it, they'd be here. Ah, that's good. That's very good. <laughs> yes. And I think I'm going to enjoy playing tomorrow night. Fine. Well, goodbye, Jackie. Goodbye, Mr. Job. Hello there, me Juliet. Oh, Mr. Job. Oh, hello, Romeo. Why aren't you backstage? I see you the very first on the program. I was waiting out here to meet Mother and Dad when they arrived. Well, don't you think you should be getting backstage? They're ready to start. I'll wait here and welcome them for you and take them up to the places. Will you do that, Mr. Job? Here are their tickets. I want to tune up a little. Sure, I understand. You run along now. And say a little prayer for me, Mr. Job, because I'll be kind of nervous playing with Mother and Dad here. They expect so much. I'll do that. Well, I stood there and waited, but somehow I was worried that they mightn't come. Maybe it was because I knew how important it was to Jackie. I watched some of the other parents arriving. Too bad that her mother and father don't realize how much the the being here tonight would mean to Jackie. (coughs) I heard her beginning to play and decided to take her parents' place. I walked down the aisle and sat down in one of the places in the third row. I was afraid to look up at the stage, afraid to see her disappointment if she looked down at me. I was thinking every moment she might stop suddenly, but she kept on bravely, pouring her whole soul through every note that floated across the auditorium. I only wished I could look up at her and give her a little nod of encouragement. Finally I did, and she smiled back at me sadly with a kind of patient resignation. I made up my mind that as soon as she was finished, I'd go backstage and we'd be Romeo and Julia together and hear the rest of the concert. I sat back and listened.
Where did Jackie Porter go? Well, I think she went over to one of the classrooms where they're... Thank you. Have you seen Jackie Porter? No, she didn't come in here. Miss Pringle, do you know where Jackie Porter went? Mr. Joe, please don't disturb me now. Don't you? I walked through the lobby and looked around. She seemed to have disappeared completely. During the intermission, I thought she'd probably turn up somewhere. But there was no trace of her, and I began to get worried. A girl of her temperament might do anything under circumstances like these. But, Miss Pringle, this is something serious. Mr. Job, I'm tired out. Arranging these concerts is no simple matter. I'm afraid something has happened to Jackie Porter. Something happened? What? I've searched the ground. She's no one around. But she must be somewhere, Mr. Job. I spoke to her parents only a few moments ago. Her parents? Yes, they were delayed getting started and arrived late for the concert. Was Jackie with them? No, they were looking for her. Well, I was down at the wharf, where she has a place she used frequently to go to be alone. And one of the canoes is missing the Algonquin. You mean you think she's taken a canoe at this time of night? Oh, Mr. Job, that's ridiculous. I don't know. That's, that's what I wanted to find out. Why that canoe is missing? Well, I'm sure I don't know. It, it should be there. Oh, this is the most... <laughs> Come in. Uh, Miss Pringle, this is Jackie Porter's violin. She left it behind the stage. Oh, all right, leave it here. Mr. Job, what are we going to do? If anything has happened, think of the bad name the school Ah, is. forget your old school. It's Jackie that's important. You go and get her parents. I'll be waiting at the wharf. No telling what that broken-hearted youngster might do. <laughs> Mr. Job, what are you going to do? We'll take the launch and see if we can find her. This is Mr. Job, Mr. and Mrs. Porter. Oh, Mr. Job, this is terrible. Do you think my... No, little... no, no. She just wanted to get away from everybody to be alone. This is a fine state of affairs. We come up here to see our daughter and find that nobody knows where she is. Oh, Paul, please. It's bad enough the way it is without you. Well, it's true. We placed our daughter in your charge, Miss Pringle. You're responsible for her. Some of the responsibility should rest on your shoulders, Mr. Porter. Yours and Mrs. Porter's. Why, what do you mean, our responsibility? Paul, Mr. Job is right. This wouldn't have happened if we'd have been here on time. Thank you, Mr. Job. But there, there, don't stand there talking. That child out in the canoe could never paddle her way back in this wind. Be careful now, then. Be careful getting in. Uh, Mr. Job, would it be all right if I go back to the school? Uh, some of the girls may become upset if word of this gets around. You, uh, you understand, don't yes, you? Yes, yeah, yeah. Go ahead, go ahead. That's Hawk Island over there. There's a little cove north side where we, we've gone on some burden expeditions, and that's where the wind's blow. When did you see Jackie last, Mr. Job? When? In the lobby before the concert. She said she was going back to tune up and asked me to say a little prayer for her so she could, wouldn't get nervous. Oh, God. God, I hope nothing has happened to her. I've been trying to pray ever since we left the wharf, but the words just won't come. It's not the words that count, Mrs. Porter. It's the heart that God listens to. Isn't that a canoe? Where? Where? See the prow sticking out under the bushes and the shore? Yeah, yeah, yes it is. We'll turn in. Oh, but the, the canoe's overturned on the edge of the shore. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that. But... These rough waves could have overturned it after it was beached. Oh. I'll bring the launch alongside to this little dock. Now, this place is slippery and dangerous if you don't know the footing. I'd better go on alone and look for her. I'll go with you. No, no, no. You stay here so that you can turn the spotlight along the shore. All right. This handle? Yeah, turn it. Turn it. Turn it right here. That's right. Fasten her up now. Turn the spotlight over this way. This all right, Mr. Job? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. You'd think if she were around, she'd have come out by this time. Jackie? Jackie? Well, now, that's strange. Oh, Mr. Job, I'm over here. Now, Jackie, my darling, why did you do such a crazy thing? You have the whole school worried, and your mother and father frantic. Mother and father? Here? They're over there in the lounge. Oh! Gosh, it's so dark I couldn't see. And I was hiding because I thought it was Miss Pringle, and she... She's all right, folks. She's here. Come on, Jackie. Be careful now. Those rocks are slippery. 
And what were you up to at all, lass, coming out like this and I looking for you and hoping you'd be my Juliet for the rest of the concert? Oh, Mr. Job, when Mother and Dad weren't there, I just couldn't stand it. So I came over here. Then I got afraid when I saw the lunch coming that Miss Pringle would come over. I understand. I understand, Juliet. But don't worry about Miss Pringle. I'll take care of her from now on. Oh, Jackie. Jackie, are you all right? Oh, you did come to hear me play. Yes, Jackie, we were late, but it couldn't be helped. Oh, darling. Darling, you're coming home with us. No matter where we go, you'll always be with us. Oh, don't cry, Mother. (laughs) I'm all right. Sure, you're fine, Jackie. We'll get back and get you a good hot drink to warm you up and then to bed and you'll be as good as new in the morning. You see, I have to take care of you, Jackie, because one day you'll be one of the great violinists. Oh, thank you. Oh. And and doesn't she want to be an actress anymore, Mr. Joe? She'll always be the greatest in the world to me, my Juliet. Barry Fitzgerald and Sandra Berkova have starred in tonight's family theater play, O Romeo, My Romeo. Now again, here is your host for this evening, John Kieran. You know, I've often wondered if there isn't some simple solution to the perplexing family problems that seem to complicate our modern civilization. You read the newspapers day after day and see accounts of tragedy and sorrow, of disagreement and divorce. I guess most of us sometimes stop and ask ourselves, What's so fundamentally wrong that so many families break up? That men and women who once pledged their love until death do us part can't live together in peace and harmony? That so many children are torn between two homes but have no real home? It may be we're so busy that we haven't time to realize how wonderful it is to have a happy home and how important it is for us to do all we can to make our home happy. I think perhaps we forget that God plays an important part in every marriage and that without God, there can be no lasting peace and happiness in a home. Yes, there is a simple solution to family problems. It's prayer, family prayer. With God's help, we can solve all family problems because the family that prays together stays together. This is John Kieran saying good night and God bless you. Our thanks to Barry Fitzgerald and Sandra Barkova for their performances this evening, and to Mark Carney for his adaptation of tonight's play from a story by Joseph and Dorothy Fox. Music was composed and directed by Max Tear. This production of Family Theater Incorporated was directed by David Young. Others who appeared in tonight's play were June Foray, Gigi Pearson, and Hal Gerard. Next week, our Family Theater stars will be Frank McHugh and James Burke in Substitute Santa. Your host will be Ray Milland. This series of the Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who felt the need for this kind of program, by the mutual broadcasting system which has responded to this need, and by a friend of the New York Foundling Hospital which cares for homeless and motherless babies without distinction of race, creed, or color. Brief portions of tonight's program were transcribed. Be with us next week at the same time when our family theater star will be Frank McHugh and James Burke with Ray Milland as host. Tony Lafrano speaking. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.